it. 5.31 PI, Pacific Mornings with Aggie. Uh, that right there is Fifth Harmony with Worth It right here on 5.31 PI, 13 minutes past 7 o'clock. You know, hey, it is always worth catching up with this next guest. Uh, we haven't had him on the show in a while, but today we welcome back, of course, and then TV personality and parenting place host, Piot Tere. Uh, he's going to be sharing a little bit about uh, what well, his wisdom that we always appreciate, uh, the impact of bullying and, of course, even family culture at home. So with that, uh, we say morena. Uh, Pion, welcome back to the show. Kia ora, morena. Always good to talk to you, Agnes, and a big kia ora to all our listeners. Yes, as always. Uh, I, I, I hear that you're obviously up north um, and, uh, you know, uh, this is exciting to hear. I don't know if I'm allowed to share, but you're building something? Building yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, building yeah. a, uh, I'm actually building a tiny house that's in Auckland and then we're going to stick it on a truck. You know, uh, this is a great idea. Some Maori guy who knows nothing about building Auckland, we'll just stick it on a truck, bro. And then we're going to drive it up north and plonk it on somebody's whenua and discuss it later and um, and go fishing. But, yeah, no, no, we're, nice. we're, we're excited about having a, a little spot. We, we're so blessed to uh, have our whenua land to go back to, you know, in uh-huh. our car. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just drive up there. So it's pretty exciting. No, that's nice. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of that. Uh, Pio, you know, obviously last Friday, right, it was Pink Shirt Day, and I hear you guys celebrated that quite big there at, at the parenting place. I would love to know your thoughts, though, on this whole thing about bullying. And, you know, we understand kids, right? Where we understand that they can often happen to our kids while they're at school, but even bullying as adults, like the fact that it goes that far, what are your thoughts on that? How can we better deal uh, with people who are bullies? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think the light at the end of the tunnel, with regard to adults and stuff, it's really considered really disgusting behaviour now in our society, you know. Back in the 80s when I was much younger, (laughs) um, you know, to to, to have a boss or to have a, um, or anybody, a person of authority who used that authority as a lever to get what they wanted, it's just not a part of our culture anymore, eh? Like you, if you're going to behave like that, man, you're not going to last, you know. And, and, you know... uh, even even to, to to corporate bullying, when you there's a lot of corridor around at the moment, and and it affects us uh, about um, about supermarkets, about supermarkets and the way they're treating their suppliers, and say, look, if you don't want, I'm going to give you five cents for your watermelon. You know, we're selling it for five bucks. To me, that's commercial bullying. So the supplier. Uh, gets bullied and who pays at the end it's you and me Agnes not that I eat watermelon but that whole concept of that um, heavy-handed tactic Mm -hmm. is becoming less and less and less and unacceptable unfortunately it's still part of um, some families tamariki uh, even kudos at school Mm -hmm. you know you know like uh, he's the man and all the rest of it and he can do this but but yeah, bullying, bullying, bullying's a real issue. So we we supported it hugely. I had my pink shirt on, and it wasn't salmon. Okay, it wasn't dark red, cuz it was pink. I owned it, and um, and these sorts of initiatives are really good to change our culture. Absolutely, and Pio, you know, I think about, of course, you know, a recent uh, budget announcement that was made last week. The whole thing about uh, them saying a hundred million dollars, you know, is going to be injected into the mental health sector. Yeah. Um, but I believe, you know, how us as parents, how can we actually aid in looking after the mental well-being of our children? Because, you know, it starts at home, right? Well, you've just put up a really, really obvious point, which I <laughs> applaud you for, that the government hasn't got yet. So what they're doing is they're putting all this money into, into mental health, but how much are they actually putting into making better parents? Uh, or maybe giving parents the skills to Mm. because if you've got the skills as a parent and those skills are a combination of traditional skills and modern skills and 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 morphing ourselves into this modern world okay Mm -hmm. so for me fantastic to give all this money for 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 our tamariki and counseling and schools and that Mm -hmm. but you know where's the support for parents um before our tamariki even get to school so yeah i i I agree with you Mm. 
Bullying is or, or a deterioration of culture or family culture happens slowly. Mm. And sometimes we get parenting wrong or there's all sorts of issues. So to turn it around, that's going to be a slow process as well. Mm. And I think parents really need to sit down um, and I'm going to say it, Fano, smarten up. <laughs> make sure we're talking to our tamariki. Make sure we're getting alongside them. Make sure we understand um, symptoms of depression and 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 don't promote any sort of uh, you know promote kindness will kill the bullying. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Uh, if you're tuning in, we are catching up, of course, with Pio today from Parenting Place. Pio, this is and going off from there. You know, we've learned that often when you, if you come from a broken family, right, they can often yeah. cause our young people to act out. So really, how do you think families can shift that culture at home? You know, to shift the culture, um, when you talk about whānau um, right across the board, Mm. Um, whānau as we know it and see traditionally has gone, okay, mm. in my books, okay, there's blended families, there's, there's wonderful people doing massive jobs, bringing up tamariki by themselves, but I reckon your whānau has to be extended into a place of support. If, mm. if you're struggling to do it by yourself, and traditionally churches would help in those sorts of things, sport would help in those sorts of things, so to change a culture... I think as parents, we really need to guide ourselves mm. and our tamariki to sit with people of, of a positive culture. You know, um, don't try and do this by yourself. We never did. As Māori, as Pacifica, the whole village, you know, how come I've got 27 aunties that are going to kick me up the nono if I, if I do something wrong, you know? But, but I really think that we have to position ourselves uh, around people who are going to support a positive culture. Mm. When our family went through some grief some years ago, that's the first thing, not the first thing I did, but I knew that for me to repair in my heart, mm. I had to surround myself with positive aroha. Now, that's not that easy to do, but if we do it in bite-sized chunks, we can get there. And mm-hmm. Google it, you know. <laughs> I mean, Google, go, go, go to the Parenting Place website and, say, you know, uh, ring somebody up and say, look, I'm really struggling with my boy. He's bullying or being bullied. Mm. And having a child that's a bully is, is, is equal to having a child that is being bullied. Yes. Okay? Mm. Um, and and, and I, I don't know, with, with my kids, I always use really good positive role models like Stacey Jones, like like Michael Jones, not mm. Shane Jones, but, you know, all the <laughs> all the different positive role models just yeah. say, uh, these guys are actually really gentle people. You know, even Adesanya, you know, this guy's the middleweight champion of the world. And if that gets through to our tamariki, I mm. say, if you actually met this guy, he's just a lovely, lovely guy. Yeah. But when he mm. turns on the switch in his environment, he turns on the switch. So promoting people so our kids can see pictures of people who behave well, even so, in their head. So good. That's yeah, and you touch on that. You know the whole thing about you know being part of a village. You know that's what we're yeah. used to. Uh, I suppose, and yeah, I know you're well aware of certain things. You know the youth at the moment, the whole ram raids and whatnot. We you know we talk about this often on air. But I suppose as a community, now if we see our community as the village, how can they play a part in the healing process of our young people? Well, I think one of the big things, and the point you raised too, you know, with ram raids and stuff, and these are groups of kids, okay, Mm -hmm. they've picked the village. Those kids have picked the village. But to my old-fashioned, not conservative, I'm thinking, oh, man, you guys, I don't think you've got the right village, Cass. You're in the wrong neighbourhood, you know? Uh, But as far as as a community, even the way we talk around this stuff, you know? Mm. Um, so if we're watching this on TV and I've got my mokos or, or nephews there, if I say, oh, look at those useless fellows, you know, they should lock them up and throw away the key instead of saying, man, I feel for those kids. They're really struggling. They're making some real dumb decisions. Mm. And that becomes a culture. And yeah. I think the community needs to speak like that too. Not with, I mean, these people who break these laws need to be, um, you know, they need they need to be helped to stop behaving like this. You know, we know that just throwing people in jail and all the rest of it doesn't work. It just makes things worse. Mm-hmm. So I think a community attitude of support is better than um, actually what mm-hmm. we've been doing for a bloody 150 years, really. 
Of course. We did sort of recently hear from a young man that we had on our show and he he was very vulnerable and spoke up and said, you know, at the end of the day, the reason why I know some of us do this is because we've been neglected and we just need to be loved. We need, do you know what I mean? They just need to be accepted. And I thought, yeah. So, so for me, it's like that, that's straight from the horse's mouth, you know, from a young person who actually is just bleeding, you know, and and needs a little bit of love, a bit of aroha. So if there was any message though, Peel, you could give to our parents out there who are possibly dealing with, you know, some of our kids who are just a little bit hard to deal with at the moment and they're, and they're caught up in that. What would you say to them? Um, Just don't do it by yourself. Recognize the problem, own the problem and take small steps to rectify it. And you've got to do it every way. I was listening to a guy, sorry, I'm going on a bit, but I'm up north, you know. I was listening to a guy talking about habit stacking, okay? And I never heard about it. So I'm because I don't drink enough water, apparently. Coffee's water to me. So every morning now I have a big glass of water. Just imagine if you habit stack every morning that you mm. woke your boy up and said, Hey bro, you're the man. I love you heaps. You know, mm-hmm. that's not weak, bro. That's wrong. That's, you know, that's leadership. And start stacking those habits bit by bit to slowly change the culture in your footy. And when they do something wrong, get alongside of them. Don't get in front of them. Get alongside of them and say, bro, I hate what you did, but I always love you. So mm. let's talk about what you did. Separate the 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 mahi or, or the bad mahi from mm. the person. You're still a jewel and a gift, but what you did, bro, is not what we do in our fauna. We don't do that, wow. Cass. You know, oh so those sorts of things. So and stay communicated. Yeah, absolutely. Pio, look, <laughs> I wish we could carry this Talanoa on, but you've just given some great tips there for, for us, even myself as a parent. Habit stacking, I'm going to look into that. That sounds yeah. like a great thing to do. Love yeah. It. Yeah, hopefully we can catch up next time and enjoy your time building that tiny house. If you feel like you want to build another one for, for myself, go ahead. <laughs> hey, hey, just before you go, Agnes uh, and Levi, uh, my auntie says, oh, why are you building a tiny house? You're a Maori. And I said, yes. And I've had That's enough fine. of you fellas <laughs> calling up in the first thing in the morning. So, you know, oh, you know no. no, that's quite selfish. But never mind. No, no. Hey, lovely to talk to you. All the very best. Always. And next time, we'll talk about the culture of the Warriors. <laughs> that's another habit sticking we need to do right there. <laughs> Love it, Pio. Thank you so much, Namahi, always for your time. Much love.